On this channel, we discuss the wrong ends in the world of wrestling, but we're usually discussing wrestlers or wrestling personalities, people who are directly involved in wrestling. But an area of wrestling we haven't discussed is the consumers of wrestling, the fans who keep the industry afloat. Because let me tell you, the wrestling fandom might be the most degenerate fandom of all time. Maybe other than Sonic. Hidden within these wrestling fans are viewers who are more than obsessed with wrestling and wrestlers, to the point that they become stalkers. Some of them online, a select few though take it one step further and do it in real life. There have been numerous cases of stalking in wrestling, but today we're going to be discussing one case, one that has gone on for many years and even inspired a character that has debuted in WWE recently. What's up guys, it's Topton Wrestling and today we're going to be discussing the WWE Performance Center Stalker. Make sure to like and subscribe and let's begin. On August 31st, 2015, a bombshell news story dropped about a man who was reportedly shot outside of the WWE Performance Center. At around 1.40pm, police arrived to the Performance Center, responding to a report of trespassing they received. At first, details of the incident weren't revealed, but soon after the suspect was revealed to be a 29-year-old man named Armando Maltalvo. It was said that two deputies approached Montalvo, who may have been armed with a knife, and after he refused to comply, he charged at one of the officers, leading the officer to retreat and fire a single shot at him, which struck him. Montalvo reportedly suffered a life-threatening wound from the gunshot, and he had to undergo surgery, and it would be successful, and he lived. After this story started making the rounds, Triple H would get on Twitter to give some clarity to fans to tell them what is actually going on here. He stated the following. Unfortunately, a deranged individual with no WWE affiliation who had a court order prohibiting him from being on WWE property was involved in an incident with an Orange County Sheriff's deputy in the parking lot of the WWE Performance Center. We defer to the Orange County Sheriff's Department for further comment and information. And soon after, the police would release their statement. Orange County Sheriff Jerry Demings held a press conference where he stated the following. The wrestling org got a restraining order against Montalvo earlier this month after a string of violent run-ins at the facility. Earlier this summer, the WWE says Montalvo spread his feces and urine on the building. He even posted a video of himself mixing the human waste and reduced fat milk in a bucket. So yeah, as it turns out, this guy had been an ongoing issue for a month. It was also said that Montalvo had a fixation on a female wrestler, and after his social media was found, it was found out that AJ Lee was his wrestler that he was fixated on, who had been out of the WWE and retired for five months at that point, which begs the question, why Montalvo tried to go? Oh, and yeah, a video of the whole thing was released. He's getting tased. Oh, here we go. Here comes Scott. Oh gosh. Oh, oh now he's ruining the lance. Oh he's getting he's going down. The case would go to court, with more about Montalvo being revealed. It was revealed in court by his father that he is schizophrenic and has borderline personality disorder. In this court session, Montalvo claims that he was the victim and he pled not guilty to his charges of aggravated assault on a law enforcement officer resisting arrest and trespassing. In the end, Montalvo was found as incompetent and sent to a state mental facility. However, Montalvo was not done with the WWE. In 2018, Montalvo would pop up again 
as he posted videos of himself on Instagram walking around Full Sail University during an NXT taping, shouting things such as, Vince McMahon's people like to make things up. Oh my god, he's waving a big thick chain on our property. Trespass him. Lock him up. And, you see, I'm bigger than NXT. I'm bigger than that whole organisation. I'm bigger than McMahon. You might ask yourself how has he made it outside an NXT taping, why is nobody stopping this? And that's because unfortunately for WWE, there was nothing saying that Montalvo couldn't be there, which is why the next month WWE would officially file a restraining order. This was granted. The restraining order was granted. But I'm not even going to try and pretend that that's the end of the story. Montalvo did not stop. In May of 2020, WWE had to take Montalvo to court again. Dave McKinnon, who works event security for WWE at the Performance Center, noted in a court filing that he has witnessed Montalvo harassing WWE and its employees for at least the past five years. He also wrote that Montalvo has continued to ignore a court order from March 22nd, 2019. That said, Montalvo was prohibited from the Performance Center. They took Montalvo to court to try and get a permanent injunction order that was to bar Montalvo from several locations related to the WWE, with the Performance Center just being one of them. He had apparently spotted Montalvo on the property as late as that very same month. It seemed as though this guy just frequently popped up at the Performance Center. But once again, and I cannot stress this enough, this did not stop him. The very next month, he would swing by the Performance Center again, one last time. And yes, it was all caught on video, on a Facebook Live, filmed by Montalvo himself. This took place in June of 2020. In the video, you can hear the likes of Dana Brooke and Lacey Evans try to get him to leave, meanwhile he shouts about his wrestling dream and makes other nonsensical statements. That same month, on June 22nd, 2020, he would come back to the Performance Center again during Monday Night Raw. He stopped by the Performance Center to yell things such as, where are the divas? Police were called, and Maltalvo was detained. And from jail, he would send the WWE attorney this letter. So yeah, um, go ahead, pause it, <laughs> try reading it. All of this has been relived in a documentary by A&E in September of this year, which I would highly recommend. It has loads of footage of everything that happened. And yes, all this is supposedly the inspiration for scripts. The character that Reggie has debuted as in NXT recently. Apparently, it's taken inspiration from this case. And yeah, that's about the story so far. And I put the emphasis on so far. And I'm just really covering my tracks. Because you never know what this guy is going to do. And how nothing is ever going to stop him. But yeah, like I said, that's it from me. Follow me on Twitter, at Topson Wrestling. My Instagram's down below as well. All of my other links down below in the description. Like and subscribe. Leave a comment on what video you want to see next. I'll see you all soon. Goodbye, and keep on rolling.